For those of you cooking along at home, here's a little recipe I like to call Sherpa tea. Because it was first made for me by Sherpas at base camp on Mount Everest. When you first arrive, due to the lack of oxygen, you can't take in deep enough breaths. You can hardly take another step. You're just about to drop when the Sherpas come out of the huts, pour you a cup of hot tea, add copious amounts of milk, and a substantial amount of sugar. The combination is like a miracle cure. A sip, and you're back on your feet and ready to continue climbing. Here, one sip. I close my eyes, and I can see Nepal. A beverage that can both put you in a meditative state and energize you? That would seem to be a dichotomy. Are the tea companies adding some secret chemical concoction? To find out, I went to Lipton's Caricho Tea Estate in Kenya. Nothing's added, nothing's taken away. Um, so the product that the consumer gets is uh, basically totally natural. It's full of an antioxidants, uh, which are really good for, for overall health. The other thing is that we don't use any pesticide on the tea here in Kenya. We're very fortunate there are no pest diseases which affect our fields. If it's nothing more than the unadulterated, unadorned leaves and buds from a tea bush inside the tea bag, then what's in the bush that gives tea its split personality, making it both calming and invigorating? A chemical compound called theanine, which is practically unique to tea. And what it does, it helps your brain, it stimulates certain alpha waves that make you relaxed, yet at the same time, alert. And that's something that only tea can give you. It's very different from a caffeine buzz or something. So a few cups of tea and you can have that effect too, Boyd. Just to make sure there's no special sauce added to the leaves before they're bagged, boxed, and shipped off for drinking, I went to Lipton's Caricho Processing Factory to follow a batch all the way from the truck to the cup. As soon as these leaves are collected in the field, they're brought here to the factory, where they're loaded onto conveyor belts and then go through a process that includes withering, cutting, oxidation, drying, and finally they're separated by quality, packaged, and available for drinking all within 24 hours. It sounds simple. And it is. Essentially, all that happens to the leaves is they are put on conveyor belts and exposed to air. Then they are chopped into little pieces and exposed to more air, finishing with some very hot air to further dry the leaves. The process is always the same, but the tea doesn't always have the same taste. So at the end of the process, the tea is separated by texture and color, and even by which furnace the leaves were dried in. But the only sure way to evaluate taste is a test that involves lots of slurping and spitting. Skills that are a couple of my specialties, by the way. If you do it for the first time, be careful not to choke yourself. <coughs> I wasn't supposed to drink it. <laughs> the hardest part is slurping. The average tea drinker wants their tea to taste the same every time. The only way Lipton can guarantee that consistency to a worldwide market is to sell blended tea. Tastings like this one help determine which flavors and how much of each should be mixed together to give consumers what they expect. So this Kenyan tea may be blended with teas from Argentina, from Indonesia, from India and Sri Lanka to produce the uh, Lipton uh, that you know in the USA. But now, Lipton has announced plans to offer tea drinkers something more than just taste when considering which tea to purchase. The company is introducing to the U.S. market tea that has been sourced from Rainforest Alliance certified estates as agriculturally sustainable. That seal of sustainability is not easily earned. The Rainforest Alliance evaluates the whole farming operation, from the plants to the people. There's three pillars. There's an environmental side, so that's the land. There's a social side, that's the people, and there's an economical side, which means that for the farmer, as well as for us, it needs to be economically viable and sustainable as well. By selling an all-natural product and blending it for a consistent, high-quality taste, and then guaranteeing it will be grown sustainably, Lipton believes it's more than just a marketing slogan when they say that one small cup can make a big difference. <laughs>